In the previous video, you created your very first plugin and you also saw how you can use the built-in plugin editor plus the system monitor to create and execute plugins right inside of the Grandimate 2 console. So in theory, we have everything we need to jump right into plugin development. The built-in editor, however, is not ideal for creating plugins as it's missing two important features to be productive, um, line numbers and syntax highlighting. So in this video, I'm going to show you my personal setup for building Lua plugins efficiently with a free code editor that helps you write correct code faster through the syntax highlighting and also helps you find errors in your plugins a lot faster through the line numbers. So depending on whether or not you have experience in software development, uh, syntax highlighting and line numbers might be new concepts to you. So uh, first let's take a look at actually what those concepts looks like and then I'll show you how you can set this up for yourself. What we see here now is the code editor that we are going to set up in just a second. What we also see here is the Hello World plugin code from the previous video. So the first thing that you will notice is that the code is actually all colorful. Um, while the built-in code editor um, in the MA2 console was just plain white. And that in a nutshell is syntax highlighting. The code editor knows which keywords a specific language has and it also knows how to recognize text and numbers and so on. So what's interesting about syntax highlighting is that it will teach you how to write correct code in this uh, really subtle way. So to give you an example, uh, if I now delete um, one of the characters in the keyword function, it will lose its colors, right? So if we go ahead and uh, remove the I, for example, and it just says function, <laughs> Um, now it's not the right keyword anymore. And we can see that because it will actually lose its blue color. So if I'm going to hit Control Z to uh, reverse that, um, now we can see that it has its color back. And after a while, you will automatically notice these color patterns and you will know when something is wrong even before you load that plugin into the console. Huge time saver. The second thing that this code editor offers you are the line numbers that you see over here. And to understand why that is important, let's take a look at what happens when we have an error inside of our plugins. I'm now just going to open up our very first plugin and I'm going to delete one of the quotation marks here in this line where it's supposed to just output hello world. So uh, let me actually delete this one and you can see this is not quite the code that we saw in the previous video. Again, uh, you know, make sure to later watch the course on how to deal with text in Lua to understand why that's okay that way. So now when I hit save and go back to the system monitor, I can see that there was an error in my plugin, right? It says here, unfinished string. What I can also see here is a number. And um, this number actually shows me over here in which line the error has occurred. Now, in our case where the plugin is very small, that's not that much of a problem. We can probably recognize where, you know, this piece of code is um, that says hello world. So we can probably pretty quickly in our four line macro figure out which part is broken. But consider this, usually uh, a problem can be somewhere in a plugin that can easily have hundreds of lines of code and then imagine having to find this error. Um, it's not impossible, but it already tells you the exact line number. So we should be able to actually use that. So like that, whenever an error occurs, you know, if you can actually make use of the line numbers that it already gives you, then you can jump to the right place in the code really fast. And if you kind of have to manually look for what part of the code the error is even referring to, that really adds up over time. So you really want to use the line numbers here. Okay, so let's now set up this code editor um, that you just saw. And what you need to do up first is to actually go over to our friend Google and enter Visual Studio Code. All right, we can see that here, perfect. Um, and then just download that and install it like you would any other software. Now, what you will notice here is that mm, this is a Microsoft product, but don't worry, it's all open source, it's completely free. Um, 
and it doesn't cost a dime. After you download a Visual Studio Code, open it up and then next up, go to this extensions menu over here. And what you can see here is that um, it already gives you a search up top here. So what you want to do here is just enter Lua and it automatically gives you a bunch of search results. Now, you know, you can probably use quite a few things here. Uh, quite a few plugins do the same thing. Um, essentially just use this top one up here that says something like Lua language um, server. It could also be syntax highlighting for Lua, whatever. Um, so in that case, just go ahead and install it. Um, and then you should be good. All right, now the next thing that you wanna do is create a folder on your hard drive where you can store all of your plugin codes. That's sort of trick number two for creating a good solid setup for developing plugins in. And another pro tip, if you create a folder for all your plugins inside of your Dropbox, for example, all of your code files will be stored and backed up to the cloud automatically. And in Dropbox, I even believe that you have a version history. Um, so double check that your cloud source provider offers that because in case that you end up breaking a plugin and it's not working anymore, you can then easily go back in time to old versions of that code and recover your old code. All right, next up, go ahead and open up that folder. So if you open up Visual Studio Code, you will see this little option here. Uh, you can also easily find that up here in file. So just open up the full folder and then you can actually see um, your whole list of plugins on this side. And what you will notice here is that all of these files that I use inside of this course, they all have the .lua extension. And you wanna make sure that all of your Lua files or all of your plugins actually have that Lua extension because that's the standard file extension for Lua files and that tells Visual Studio Code to use this Lua syntax highlighting that you just installed. So in case that doesn't work, um, there's another trick to tell Visual Studio Code that you want to treat this as a Lua file. So if you have a file open, double check down here on the lower right that it actually recognizes Lua. And if not, um, you can click on that and then um, you know take a look and you should be able to find Lua in the list of installed languages. If not, you can always go up here and click on search marketplace extension for Lua and it will actually suggest something. So either way, you should be able to set this to um, the Lua syntax highlighting. All right, so that gives you the syntax highlighting. Um, it should actually look identical to what I have here, right? And then the second thing that we didn't even need to install is the line number. So the next question is how do we get this Lua code into the console? If you use a GrandMA2 on PC, that's actually pretty easy. And keep in mind, even if you want to build plugins for a physical console, um, what you can probably do, which is the easiest way, is to just create a session between your um, on PC setup and your console. And like that, you know, you can directly manipulate the plugins inside of the show, but also have them on your desk available in, um, you know, right away, essentially. And the second is, is even live, like it's it syncs, right? Never mind. You know what a session is. Um, you know, back to the question: How do we get this code into the on PC setup? Well, it's actually pretty easy. There's, um, you know, two to three keyboard shortcuts that I'm going to teach you, and once you get used to those, you can really get very fast in moving your code over to the console. So the first is to press Control A to highlight all of the code, like that. Right? And then next, uh, press Control C to copy it. Now the next thing that I want you to do is with your thumb or whatever other finger, hold down tap and keep it pressed until I tell you to let go of it. And now while you keep holding Alt down, press tap um, a few times until you reach your code editor um, of your on PC console. Now you can let go of Alt and like that, you just switched over to this other application without having to do anything with your mouse. And now you can right click on the plugin in question, in this case, our, um, our Hello World Lua plugin. And now, again, press Control A to select all of the existing code. 
and then press Control v to insert the code that you just copied over in your code editor. All right, now you can press save and that will of course store the changes and execute your new fresh plugin. And we can see here, no error. And now we have the hello world again. Now in theory, there's a way to actually bring code from your console over to Visual Studio Code as well. You can also use the Control A. Um, you know, I mean, I just showed you that. You can use Control A to uh, select all of the code and also press Control C to actually copy this code. But um, just to avoid a big mess, what I would recommend is that you always make your changes in Visual Studio Code, and then you know bring them over to um, MA2. And if it doesn't work edit it in Visual Studio Code again, and then bring it over again. Like that, it's sort of a one um, directional data flow and you don't have to worry about, you know, what you just edited where. Always edit in Visual Studio Code and always insert into um, GrandMA2. Um, don't do it both ways. It'll confuse the hell out of you, I think. All right. So that's how we can bring code over to the console from um, our code editor. By the way, jumping back, you can press Alt down again and then um, just press Tab. And in this case, we can actually see that uh, the code editor is pretty close now in the, in the um, order of the windows. So this, um, just pressing Alt Tab switches between the last two windows that you switched back and forth between. So once you kind of selected the right window, you can just go Alt Tab and switch around really fast. So in general, you will be surprised by how fast you get used to these keyboard shortcuts. And I think that you will find that this is surprisingly fast, a surprisingly fast way to build plugins. And on top of that, you can actually organize all of your plugins separately from your shows, which I think is also very important. Again, I recommend using Dropbox so your files are backed up to the cloud. You can also, of course, uh, use any other um, cloud source service that you personally prefer. Um, just make sure that you have versioning activated and then your code is actually safe and all of your different versions are automatically uh, retained for you so you, you can jump back if anything breaks.